Yes, so I am very, very excited with the word that we received today. Amen. Father, we just want to thank you. We give you glory and adoration. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We invite you into the service, Father God. Let it be all of you and none of me that ministers to your people this morning. Those of you who are tuning in online, on YouTube, on Facebook, on TikTok, wherever you will be watching us from, we pray a blessing upon your life. We pray that you will receive a word in season, a word appointed for your situation that will unlock you from your prison. We pray for a word that will reach you this morning through the teaching that will unleash you into your next dimension of success and your next level of breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the church of God said amen and amen. Amen. Somebody please be seated in the presence of God. Hallelujah. I'm excited. Is somebody excited? Just check whether you are sitting next to a, a, a neighbor that is very much alive. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I know that time is fast spent. I just want to apologize for those of you who are tuning in from online. You know that we're always battling with this load shedding in South Africa and the network is a bit behind, but we will definitely make sure we re-air the broadcast. But I do know that now we are definitely live and everybody can see us now. Thank God for that in Jesus my name. Those of you who are serious Christians who bring your journals and pens to the uh, church and you bring your Bibles, kindly open your journals and pens because you are serious children of God. You are serious leaders. You are ministers of the gospel. You are students of the word. How do you know a student of the word? Somebody who takes the gospel seriously. Somebody who has a Bible when they come to church. Somebody who has a journal when they come to church. Amen. Somebody. Because we go back and we study and we get rooted in the word and we get basking in the word. Amen, somebody. This morning I'm speaking from a subject matter, if you're taking notes, realms of royalty and dominion. The realms, the dimensions of royalty and dominion. Royalty is kingship. Royalty is rulership. Dominion is making sure that you are dominating and you are in charge. Amen. The Bible says in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9, it says, you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood chosen by Jesus, by God himself and he chose you to be his special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. So we begin to understand that it is God that calls you to become royalty. So royalty is in your DNA whether you like it or not. Therefore you are a king, you're a queen whether you like it or not. Somebody shout amen if you believe that. So you are also a royal priesthood. Therefore you begin to understand that he's calling when the Apostle Paul says that we are ministers of reconciliation, it is not because we have an option to be evangelists or an option to be ministers of reconciliation, but we are supposed to make sure that we spread the gospel of God and other people come to the realization that there is a God that can save them from their situation. They is a God that can save them and become Lord of their lives. Therefore, soul winning becomes an issue that you should be doing naturally. Amen, somebody. Let me proceed. He says, I did not call you to a life of mediocrity. I did not call you to a life that will be gloomy. I called you into a life of abundance so that when people can see you and see the, your royalty and you ruling, they, you can declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, into his wonderful light, because he didn't call you so that you don't have a testimony. Somebody tell your neighbor, say, I will testify. I will testify. Amen, somebody. So we now begin to understand that no one rules by chance. There are three ways that you can become a ruler and you can be royalty. Number one, you can become a member of the royal family by inheritance or by your DNA because you are born into kingship and royalty and that is where we fall in. Amen, somebody. Then the second type of rulership or royalty is the kind of royalty where you are royalty by virtue of election. Let us look for a dimension of uh, a prayer presidency, for example, in our country where we elect our president. So there is times that we, e we elect rulers, those who will govern us, those who will put things in order, those who will make sure that there are laws that are being enforced. So it is election. Number one, I said inheritance. Number two, it is election. Number three, how do you get into the realm of royalty? You take over territories in, and, and we learn in the Bible that Israel engaged in wars and won those wars 
wars. So by conquest, they took over territories. By conquest, they engaged in wars and they won. Shout amen. Hallelujah. So we begin to understand that now in our own personal lives, we are rulers of our lives. We are in charge and we don't need anybody to elect us as in the second option, which I was saying that by election, you can be elected. That means we need to hold elections and we need to vote you in. But when it comes to me and you, he says you only need his vote, one vote, the vote of God. The vote of God gets you into the seat of parliament. The vote of God gets you into the seat of of heaven. Amen, somebody. So you need to understand that your matter is settled. From the time you got born again, you stepped into rulership and you stepped into dominion. You stepped into becoming royalty and dominion. Hallelujah. My objectives are very simple for this morning. We started last night, for those of you who are following me online as well, that we, we, we wanted to understand the ways and the keys of reigning in life. We are understanding the ways of reigning and the keys of reigning and ruling in life. Hallelujah. So we started looking at the principles that are, are, are behind making sure that we become principal people. When you are a principal person, you are a notable person. Hallelujah. We look at the principles and we understand that royalty does not happen overnight, but it happens deliberately and calculatively. It must be deliberate. So even in your lifestyle, in our month of arising and shining, we are deliberate deliberate about our royalty ship. We are deliberate about our dominion ship. We are calculated. We take risks that are calculated, actions that are calculated. We don't just wander about. Amen, somebody. So number one, for those who are the students of the word, we understand that there is a pathway to becoming royalty today that we are focusing on, and that is a pathway of conquest. Hallelujah. Somebody say conquest. It is a pathway of conquest. I said Israel made, was engaged in a lot of wars and they, they were placed on top of other nations. They understood that they were above other nations because of the wars that they conquered. Hallelujah. You need to determine in your life, like the Israelites, that are you either going to be a slave or are you going to be a king? Amen, somebody. You decide whether you are going to be a king or a subject or a slave. Amen. So by winning wars, we begin to understand that we can step into royalty. Hallelujah. You look at the example of David, that when he slayed Goliath in the field, then the people started seeing the evidence that there is something royal about this man. Then they began to see the evidence that this son was somebody who was going to become a king. Amen. Open your Bibles to 2 uh, Samuel, the book of 2 Samuel chapter 5 verse 6 to 7. The book of 2 Samuel chapter 5 verse 6 to 7. If you there say amen. If you there, say amen, and louder amen if you are really here. The Bible says, now the king and his men went to Jerusalem against the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, who said to David, you shall not enter here for the blind and the lame, even the weakest amongst us will turn you away. They thought David cannot come in here because the walls are impenetrable. Nevertheless, David captured the stronghold fortress of Zion, that is the city of David. Hallelujah. So you now begin to understand that there are walls that I will be seen seeking to come up on you and wanting you to or, or close doors for you. And they were telling David that you are not going to enter the city. But David defied all. So he nevertheless entered and what did David achieve? He captured the stronghold, the fortress of Zion. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. So by conquest, we begin to see how David set up a situation where he conquered and made sure that Jerusalem gets to be in charge and gets to be the capital of the city of Israel. Hallelujah. So we understand now that just like the Israelites dominated territories, you are going to have to take up dominance. You're going to have to dominate. Amen, somebody. You need to understand that you need to take your place. Tell your neighbor, take your place. If Israel took their place, you need to take your place. Nobody is going to shift up for you. Wherever they close doors for you, you need to take your place and make sure that they shift up for you. Hallelujah. You're not going to need to force yourself in, in that place. Amen, somebody. So you conquer. 
You make up your mind that I'm going to be a king, that I'm going to be a ruler. Amen, somebody. Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 24 to 25. Please make a note. For the sake of time, I'm going to be going through a lot of scriptures as I teach you this morning so that you can go and, and reflect on them later. Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 24 to 25 says, Now arise, 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 arise. This is our month of arising and shining. Amen. We are arising and shining. He says, Now arise, come up now. When you arise, what did I say earlier in the week? When you arise, you shine. When you shine, you arise. Hallelujah. When you arise, you shine. It's a consequence of arising. He says, continue on. Because when you continue on, you are charging forward regardless of what is fighting you. Because yes, there are many adversaries that are going to come up against you. But you have to push forward. You have to charge forward. You have to cross the Red Sea. Whether or not the Red Sea, you're not sure it, it will split. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, continue on and go through the valley of and on look, I have handed over to you Sihon the Amorite, the king of Heshbon, and his land. He says, begin, take possession of it, and fight with him in this battle. This day, I will begin to put the dread and the fear of you on the people who are the pagans under the whole heaven, who when they hear the reports about you, they will tremble and be in anguish because of you. This is the God that you serve. He says he will put the fear in in those who are pagans, those who are fighting you. He says, charge on, arise, because I am giving you victory for the battle that you are about to embark in. Hallelujah. Matthew 11 verse 12, he says, from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. You begin to understand that timidity will not get you anywhere, but there is a point where you need to fight. Hallelujah. So even in this month of rising and shining, we're declaring that we are ready to fight. You need to fight the fight because the devil doesn't get tired. You do with one demon now another demon will be coming the bible says that when one you destroy one they go and fetch seven more so you need to always be in ready to get into the ring and fight hallelujah so i said number one you engage into royalty or you step into royalty and dominion by conquest by fighting and making sure you win number two whether you are in charge or under control is a matter of fight. Whether you are going to dominate or be dominated is a matter of conquest. You need to understand that even royal families who are, are ruling certain countries now, they know that they can be, uh, they can be a coup at any time. There can be another king that seeks to rise. There can be another president that wants to rise. There is always a political party that is seeking uh, to be elected and to be in charge. Hallelujah. So how do you appropriate your conquest? How do you make sure you win in your war? Psalm 89 verse 19. You can turn there while I go through. Psalm 89 verse 19. Number one, you need to have a fighting spirit. That is what I taught yesterday. I'm just recapping at the beginning for those of you who were not tuned in, but so that you can get the context. You must possess a fighting spirit. That's number one. Psalm 89 verse 19, he says, once you spoke in a vision to your godly ones and said, I have given help to one who is mighty, giving him the power to be a champion for Israel. I've exalted one chosen from the people. Hallelujah. You don't fly your way up. You have to fight your way up. You don't fly your way up. You have to fight your way up. Some of the staircases that you need to climb are wobbly. Some of them are not so solid. Sometime when you are thinking you are stepping up the ladder of success, somebody will come and kick it. Fight your way up. Look at how God helps people who are ready to fight. Psalm 89 verse 19, he says, I have given help to the one who is mighty. He doesn't give help to cowards. He doesn't give help to quitters. He doesn't help give help to people who like excuses. They're always giving excuses why they cannot achieve certain things. They're always giving up. At the point of breakthrough, when the door is about to open, they give up and they turn back. This thing is not working. This Jesus thing that you're talking about is not working. Just at the point of breakthrough. Hallelujah. So we need to understand, saints of God, that God does not help cowards. He helps warriors. He helps warriors. God does not strengthen the timid, but he strengthens those who are violent, who are ver ferocious. 
Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 5 to 6. Isaiah 28, verse 5 to 6. Because I'm recapping, I'm going to go faster. In that day of the Lord of hosts will, will become a magnificent crown and a glorious diadem to the, to the converted remnant of his people, a spirit of justice for him who sits in judgment administering the law, a strength to those who drive back the battle at the gate. Don't wait until the enemy enters the house. Deal with him at the gate. Don't wait. Deal. Drive back the battle at the gate. Protect your gates. The reason why you will get people who are saying, I hear things on my top of my house. What are you doing sleeping, hearing those things? Why were you not at the gate? When you enter your gate, declare. Before you even reach your door, declare. Close the gate and tell the devil, no nonsense here. I am in charge. I am the principality that is in charge here. No serpent that whatever they are sending, what is this nonsense? They say you you you, you stepped on something amiss, and 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 now they, they say in Sutu they say you have a sephula. Why back to sender, deal with it. When you step on the thing and you feel eh, get off me, get touch right there and there. Before it becomes a prayer point, before you come and ask for us to lay hands on you, deal with the thing you felt it. You were entering the gate. You said, mm, there's something weird here. Why did you still continue? I don't know. There's this thing that happened when I entered the gate. Hair on my back. Hair, what, what? Why did you not deal with it? Before you even entered your yard, at the gate, head to send up. So you need to understand that you have been given the keys of reigning. Hallelujah. You have been given the keys of dominion. You need to understand that your battle was declared victorious way at the beginning, before you even entered, while you are approaching the gate. Hallelujah. For everyone born of God is victorious and overcomes the world. Whoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has conquered. This is the victory that has overcome the world. Our continuing and persistent faith in the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Because you are consistent and pers persistent. Not today you are believing in this, tomorrow you are believing in that. Tomorrow, and now you think, oh, let me try Jesus again. Be consistent, be persistent. He says, this is the victory that overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes your enemies. This is the victory that overcomes the challenges that seem to be holding you back. This is the victory that, that overcomes the limitations that are holding you back. Talk to me, somebody. Talk to me if you are a real believer. Hallelujah. So you need to understand that the devil is, 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 is determined that you, you're not going to win. And you need to say, I am going to win. If anybody's going to be tired, it's not going to be me. It's the devil that has to be tired. Amen. Joshua 7 verse 7 to 8. Joshua chapter 7 verse 7 to 8 so it says, Alas, so Lord, this is what Joshua is saying now. God, why have you brought us and these people across the Jordan at all? Only to hand us over to the Amorites. He's lamenting, he's crying. He's saying to destroy us. Did you bring us here to destroy us? If only we had been willing to live beyond the Jordan. Oh Lord, what can I say now that the army of Israel has turned back in retreat and fled before their enemies? Hallelujah. So he's saying, the only victory I know how, God, is that we cannot retreat against the enemy. The only victory I know is that I'm supposed to win. I cannot go back to your people and tell them that you have abandoned us. Ah. Ah. This is why he invites you. He says, reason with me. Let's discuss. When you wake up and say, God, I don't like the way my life is looking. It doesn't look right. This does not bring you praise. This does not bring you glory. I cannot be ashamed. Tell your neighbor you were not called to a life of shame. Hallelujah. You were not brought out of the darkness to a life of shame. Whatever battle that you will face, you need to make sure you swallow up that battle. You cannot continue to be conquered by the things that conquered your father, the thing that conquered your mother, the thing, you, 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 the generational spiritual patterns and curses conquering you. Because you say, all my sisters before are not married. Therefore, we don't have a blessing of marriage in our family. The devil is a liar. Somebody told you that in your family, everyone is barren. Nobody has children. It's a lie. 
You see a repetition, your cousins that don't have jobs, they are jobless and you think it's normal. Why you are behaving as if everything is normal? Be abnormal about that situation. Make up your mind and say, something is wrong. This pattern is wrong. I cannot. Uh -uh. You have accepted the status quo that, oh, I come from a poor family. People don't have jobs. Be the one who will have a different testimony. Be the one who will be the first one to go to school. Be the first one who will get a degree. Be the first one who will buy a car. Don't be scared that somebody is going to bewitch you from the village. No. Be the first one that changes your life and you change the lives of your siblings and your family. They are counting on you. Otherwise, what is the point of you carrying the Bible and becoming and, and behaving like a big shot over here? Hallelujah. I declare and I decree to everybody who is listening to the sound of my voice right now, you will win every battle you, you take part in. You will swallow the battles that destroyed your fathers. You will swallow the battles that destroyed your mother, your sisters. In Jesus' mighty name. I decree and declare that wherever people could not cross over, you will cross over. You will reach the heights of success. Wherever your siblings, anybody that went before you, where they did not succeed, you will succeed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You must make up your mind to have a fighter spirit, a revolutionary spirit, a bulldog fighter, tenacity. Be like a bulldog. Have you ever seen a bulldog when it, it handles its prey? It does not let go. Be like Jacob and say, I will not let you go until you bless me. Wrestle and contend with your angel and say, I will not let you go until you bless me. Some of you give up too soon. You fast and say, ah, this thing is not working. Wrestle, I will not let you go until you bless me. Amen. Make up your mind to teach principalities in your area a lesson. Tell them I am a principality. What, are you afraid that they are going to come against you? Hallelujah. Glory to God, somebody. Some of us are scared of witches in our neighborhood. They say, hey, there are witches here, there are witches here. Hey, mighty Jesus. I received a word yesterday. Somebody saying, can I come and minister in Guyane? for um a revival and my friend who's also a pastor was laughing say hey do you know how many witches are in Guyane? are you sure you want to go i say if somebody says to me the lord said and they showed them me and i must go to Guyane, who am i to say no i was born for this hallelujah okay the, the witches in Guyane are <laughs> hearing this hallelujah don't be afraid we are stepping forward number three 3B. Learn to conquer yourself. Hallelujah. I said the first point is that you do what? You have a fighting spirit. Number two, you need to learn to conquer yourself. Judges chapter 6 verse 14 to 16. The book of Judges chapter 6 verse 14 to 16. The Bible says the Lord turned to him and said, go in this your strength of yours and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Are we together? Have I not sent you? Have I not sent you? Hey, Jesus, listen to God. He says, go in this strength of yours. Go and save Israel. God is asking you this morning to arise and save your family. Go in the strength that he has given you. Which other strength are you waiting for? I have delivered Midian into your hand. I have given you the victory into your hand. But look at what Gideon says. Gideon, this is the problem a lot of people have in, 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 in life. Now, verse 15, he says, but Gideon said to him, please, Lord, I am to rescue Israel. Me? Are you sure? Even after God has told him, I'm the one that is sending you. It would have been a different case if you are sent by a friend or a family member. But he says, I'm the one sending you. You are still asking, is it, is it me that will rescue Israel? He says, behold, my family is the least. 
My family is poor. My family does not have a, a rapport. My family is not well known. It's insignificant. He says it's insignificant in Manasseh. I am the youngest. I don't know whether I can handle this thing. I'm the smallest in my father's house. And the Lord answered him and he says, I will certainly be with you. And he's saying that to you this morning. He says, I will certainly be with you and you will strike down the Midianites. You will strike down your battles as if they were only one man. So God is saying, even if it, it's an army that is coming against you, 10,000, 3,000, 300, it will be like you are just fighting one man. That means with one blow, TKO, hallelujah. Glory to God. So verse 15 was the problem. What is verse 15? Is the mentality that you are inferior. It's the mentality that you don't have the resources required. It is the mentality that you are insignificant. You don't even regard yourself. You don't regard your family. You don't regard anything. You think you are too young. Why? As young as you are, you might be the answer to your family's issues. Hallelujah. Listen, child of God, you need to understand that until you conquer what you fear, you cannot capture your future. You want to capture your fear, you have to conquer your fears. Amen, somebody. What are you conquering? The fears of the unknown. You are conquering the fears that your mother did not achieve this. Your, your father did not achieve this. You are conquering the fears that divorce is a common pattern. You are conquering the fears of those who are saying you will not amount to anything. You are conquering the fears and the gossip of people that have been talking about you. They are saying you are stupid. Maybe you were failing in school. You were doing exam. You are studying, but you keep on failing. And your friends kept on laughing at you and say you are very stupid. You don't know anything. You won't amount to anything. It might as well. You just deregister. Hallelujah. You need to conquer those voices. You need to conquer those fears. You need to conquer the gossip of those who said, I know where you are coming from. You used to be a loose woman. You used to be a loose man. I know that you used to have 40 boyfriends, 30 boyfriends, 10, 3. You used to sleep around with married men. You will not amount to anything. You will not get married because people like you don't get married. Talk to me, somebody. Am I communicating to a praying church? Am I communicating to a believing church? We need to conquer our fears. We need to conquer our complex of inferiority. We need to conquer self-esteem that is low. Hallelujah. You must be confident of this very thing that says he who has begun a good work in me is faithful enough to make sure that he will perform it until the very end. You need to know that the confidence in me is the confidence that I have in Christ, the hope of glory. Hallelujah, somebody. Talk to me, somebody. You need to understand that I am not poor, but I'm a peculiar person. He cannot say all these things about me and it be a lie because God is not a liar. He's not like man. Hallelujah, somebody. He's not a liar. His promises are yes and amen. Talk to me, somebody. Oh, glory to Jesus. So you need to understand that you move in a state of authority because royalty does not move timidly. If you see somebody who's from a royal family, if they were to walk in into this door right now, they would walk in and you would know that this person is from a royal family. There is a walk that you need to walk. Do you remember there was a time somewhere in South Africa they say, Nai there must be no law and you must just know that you have stepped in. Walk your walk so that they know that now no walk is entered. This walk has entered. This walk is somebody who's feeling themselves. They know they have arrived. They know that this is their time to shine. Talk to me, somebody. You need to walk like a person who's in authority because we understand that once we conquer our inferiority complex, then we become established. So until you walk in authority, you cannot be established. I said something right there. I said, until you walk in authority, you cannot be established. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Conquer the things that they said about you. Conquer a state of passivity. You are just passive. You are just watching life just pass you by. You don't have a comment. You don't even feel like anything. You've lost the, lost the fight. You are not even making an effort anymore. Oh, hallelujah. Do you think God can truly, was he bored that he just said, oh, let me just see what I can make and create. Let me, let me make men in my image. He was so bored that he would create failures. He is so serious. He's a serious guy. <clears throat> He's so serious. He cannot, he cannot waste his time. 
God is a businessman. God is like, he's above Warren Buffett. He will not waste his time. Hallelujah. It's in the car. Amen. So he will not create a non-entity. God, when he creates, he creates people who, who uh, are going to become entities. People who don't just build small businesses, but people who create empires. Amen, somebody. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Hallelujah. <clears throat> so, whatever is tying up your mind, you need to conquer it. Whatever is limiting your, your mind, you need to conquer it. Do not have limiting beliefs about you. Hallelujah. Deal with them. You serve a God who is a businessman. A businessman, when he invests, he wants to make sure he gets his return on investment. How can he release a product that is not going to produce? Is there a businessman that can go into a manufacturing and open a plant so that the, 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 all the products just fail and they should not be sold? He's a lie. He's not a waster. So don't waste your life. Those who seek to waste your life must be wasted. Things that need seek to waste your life must be wasted. Say, my father, my father, waste my wasters. My father, my father, waste my wasters. Jesus. Hey, I wish you guys could believe these things are real. It is possible. Say your neighbor, it's possible. Somehow what they are saying about you, calling you ugly, calling you fat. Hey, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Thank God my husband has got something to hold on to. Hey. I don't even have to buy a blanket in winter. Let me get out of there. Jesus. Hallelujah. You want to sing, sing. You want to preach, preach. You want to go into business, go into business. Don't listen to anybody who says, you know what, uh, Minister Amelia, keep singing in the shower. Keep, 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 keep working that thing. Hallelujah. Stick to your day job, but keep singing in the shower. Hey. Hallelujah. You want to take over a territory. You can't go and ask the competitor and say, how is this business doing? I want to come and start the same business. Do you think they are going to tell you that it's doing well? No, no, no. You want to open up a church? Even if they tell you there's 17 churches. I went to Nigeria one time. My first time going there. I was shocked. There's literally almost a church in every third house. Every, like you don't, you don't walk more than 300 or 500 meters without finding a church. And there are banners of churches everywhere. Now, do you think those who started those churches said, eh, I'm not going to start a church. There's already a church on the street. If God has called you, who else do you want to validate you? Let God validate you. He says, I have sent you. Therefore, he gives you the victory to overcome. He gives you the, the, the resources so that you succeed. Yes, there are those who are not called that call themselves. But if you are called and you believe that God is going to back you up, go ahead. Hallelujah. They will look at you and they will see that, you know, you have a testimony that gives the evidence that God is backing you up. Hallelujah. Someone somewhere has started the same thing and they have failed. Great. That is not for me. Because people will tell you that I started the same business. It doesn't work. Well, you didn't work it. If you worked it, it didn't work for me. It will work. Let me go try my try so that I can shine my shine. Hallelujah. Many people said that, hey, marriage is a is, is headache. What, what, what? Let me go. If I have to come back, I will also be a returned soldier like the others. I also want to go taste. Let me go. Maybe I'm going permanently. Right? Ah, just because you fail doesn't mean I'm going to fail. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So these things that have entered your head, that are limiting you, determine in your mind that, ah, uh -uh, I'm going to block it. I'm going to block it. I'm going to show the devil that I'm too loaded to be dislocated. 
Ah, that one I just created now, Seth. I am too loaded to be dislocated. Locate your position. When you are in a soccer team, there is a striker, there is a defender. But every now and then, after they kick the striker, you might see the one who comes out from the left flank. You might find a defender having scored. In my time, I didn't understand how Lucas Khadebe would score. I thought he was a defender, but before I knew it, I said, who comes and who, 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 who? And the next thing you see, the goal is in the goalpost. So, my dear, I don't know what team you are playing for. Be ready to score that goal. Who are you waiting for? The striker that you are depending on may fall, but you become the striker. Hallelujah. Maybe they bench the, 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 the number one striker and they pull you into the field. Are you ready to score? Oh, Jesus. There is no offsight in this game. Royalty walks in. Wherever royalty comes in, they don't even ask them for the invitation card. Or the card for permission to say, are you invited? When, when royalty comes, there is somebody, there's an usher who's already waiting at the gate. They know that. Ah, your highness. They don't have to look at your name and verify your ID. Mm -mm. They know you. Walk the walk. Naile walk. Hallelujah. The utterances of the devil are not final. The verdict of the devil is not final. But the verdict of God is the one you are looking for. Number three, see, men to conquer generational limitations. Conquer generational limitations, Galatians 3, verse 13 to 14. The Bible says, Christ purchased our freedom and redeemed us from the curse of the law and it is and its condemnation by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs crucified on a tree. In order that in Christ Jesus, the blessings of Abraham might also come to the Gentiles, to me and you, so that we can all receive the realization of the promises of God through the spirit of faith. So he redeemed you so that you can attain all these things. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 21, make notes and move fast with me. Zechariah 1.21 says, I asked, what are these horns and the craftsmen coming to do? What are the carpenters are coming to do? And he said, these are the horns, the powers that have scattered Judah so that no man raised up his head. These are the horns that have been preventing you to arise. They scattered your, your mindset. They scattered your objectives. They scattered your goals so that you cannot be raised up. They confused your family. They made you believe that you guys were not have resources. They made you believe that you are you are under a witchcraft spell. These are the horns that scattered Judah so that no man raised up his head. They didn't want you to rise up. They did not want you to raise your head because of the suffering inflicted by the Gentile nations. They were inflicting suffering on you. That situation has been inflicting suffering on you because it did not want you to arise. The devil does not want you to wake up. He says, but the craftsmen, the carpenters have come to terrify them. Oh, Jesus, you missed it. I wish you could really meditate on this word. <clears throat> he says, the carpenters have come to terrify them and make them panic and throw the horns of the nations who have lifted up their horns against the land of Jordan in order to scatter it. So God brings reinforcement. That is this word. This is why I'm here this morning screaming like this to tell you that God has sent a carpenter. I am that carpenter maybe to help you, to let you know that I'm here to scatter those that came to scatter you. Jesus. My father, my father, scatter those who are scattering my life. Jesus. They do not think that anyone in your family can become anything. So they don't want anyone to arise. They don't want you to identify what is holding your family back. Make up your mind that you're going to identify what is limiting you. It's a very sad place to be when you don't know what you are fighting. You don't know which demon you are dealing with. Amen, somebody. Fight them head on. Hallelujah. Anyone who said you will not cross a certain limit, anyone who wrote you off, call the carpenters. Number 3D, learn to conquer enemy oppositions. Talk to me, somebody. Learn to conquer enemy oppositions. If your destiny, if you know inside of you that your destiny is big, you need to understand that the battle will be big. 
Nobody who is called for a serious destiny fights small battles. Hallelujah. Who comes and troubles a hobo? Do you think anybody, the devil will come and bother a hobo who's sleeping by the street? No. Maybe you find yourself sleeping on the street. Why do you think you are sleeping on the street? Don't you see that the devil is trying to suppress you? He's trying to make you think that there is no God. The suffering you are going through is, is, a, is, is an indication of your calling and your destiny. Hallelujah. But we have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. So you now move around with the confidence that you have conquered. You have, you are conquering every battle that you are engaging in is guaranteed. Number four, <clears throat> you need to understand that to enter the realms of royalty and dominion, you need to have a certain type of mindset and mentality. You need to look at your mindset and your mentality. Hallelujah. Your mindset and your mentality. Your mindset will determine your outcome in life. Can we take that chair out, please? Your mindset will determine your outcome in life. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7 it says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. As a man, Thinketh in his heart, so is he. Your behavior, as you think, we see it in your actions. As you think, we see it in your life. Your life is what it is because of what you have been thinking. Hallelujah. Psalm 49 verse 12 says, But man with all his self-honor and pomp, uh, his non-understanding status, his pompousness, will not endure. He is like the beast that perish. If you are looking only at your self-honor, Psalm 49 verse 20 says, A man who is held in honor, yet who lacks spiritual understanding and a teachable heart, is like the beast that perish. Oh, Jesus. The scripture just said something very powerful. If you are held in honor, but you lack spiritual understanding, you don't have a teachable spirit. Jesus, let me pack here. You are held in honor. You want to be held in honor, but you lack spiritual understanding and you don't have a teachable spirit. You are Mr. and Mrs. Know-it-all. Nobody can teach you anything. You think you have arrived. The apostle Paul says, I do not count myself to have arrived. No matter how much you are thinking you are, you have been ministering for 15 years, 20 years, there is always something you can learn. Have a teachable spirit. There is something that humility unlocks. Royalty people who are arrogant, they don't get far. But humility positions them. He says it is those who do not have a teachable and a, spirit, a spiritual understanding, they are like beasts that perish. Psalm 82 verse 5 to 6, he says the rulers do not know nor do they understand. They walk on in the darkness of complacent satisfaction. All the foundations of the earth and the fundamental principles of administration of justice are shaken. I said, listen to God. God says, the rulers, they don't know or they don't understand. Others don't know and understand who they are and what I called them for. That is why they are not taking up their rightful position. And he now clarifies it again. I'm giving you so many witnesses of scripture so that you get this and get this once and for all. He says, you are gods. Indeed, all of you are the sons of the most high. You are gods. I gave birth to a god. I did not give birth to a dog. I did not give birth to a useless person. I did not give birth to a person who is unproductive. You are gods and you are the sons of the most high God. You are not bastards. You are sons of adoption. Nevertheless, you will die like men and fall like any one of the princes. Why do you die like men and other princes? It is when you don't realize your godshipness. I am the Jesus that 
they've been waiting for. Hi. Some of you think that it is blasphemy to say that. You are the Jesus your family has been waiting for. I am the God. It is not, it is not a swear word to call yourself a God. Gods give birth to God. Hiya, bayaya. Don't know if you have seen these uh, old ancient movies. There's Hercules. You know that this one is a god. You can't kill a god. He's a starring. They remain a starring. They, they, they survive. So your mindset will determine your outcome in life. Your mindset will determine your outcome in life. Let us note the following things about your mentality. What are the things to note about your mentality? Number one, your mentality will determine what becomes your reality. Number one, I'm summarizing what I captured in the scriptures that I just shared now. Your mentality will determine your reality. As he thinks in his heart, so is he. If you think about it, we see it. That is the reality you see. If you don't like what is going on, check what is in your mind. Number two, your mentality will determine your prosperity. Your mentality will determine your prosperity. Proverbs 21 verse 5 says, The plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance and, and advantage. But everyone who acts in a haste comes surely to poverty. A mentality, those who are diligent, surely come to being having plenty things. They have more than enough. They have abundance and advantages. Imagine when you step into any environment, you have the advantage. In this virtue. So your thinking will determine how plenteous you are. Number three, your mentality will determine your authority. Number three, your mentality will determine your authority. Proverbs 30 verse 30 says, The lion which is mighty amongst beasts and does not turn back before any, Hallelujah. You are is the lion which is a, a mighty amongst beasts. Hallelujah. So your mentality will determine your authority. If you look at a lion, the, the example of Proverbs 30 verse 30, the mentality of a lion, the lion, there, there are bigger animals in the field. There's elephants, there's giraffes, there's ostriches. But yet, if an ostrich were to kick a, a lion, you know the lion would die? But the lion is not scared. He's the one that intimidates even the biggest ones. He intimidates the giraffe. The giraffe is afraid. But yet the lion is... Oh, it, the, when the lion is approached, the lion does not eat grass. When he wants his flesh, he wants his flesh. Jesus. Am I talking truth? Is this not, or you don't watch a, what do you call it? A ge what is that? Geo National Geographic. Have you seen how a lion performs? I got them. Go and get your flesh. The lion does not eat grass. I want you to declare it. I am a lion. I don't eat grass. The lion rules by sense. He calculates. He's calculated. He's calculated. Hallelujah. Number four, mentality will bring your liberty. Mentality will bring about your liberty. Every area of life, of your life, where you feel like you are chained, those chains can be broken if you change your mentality. Luke chapter 15, verse 17 to 18. Luke chapter 15, verses 17 to 18. The Bible says, but when he finally came to his senses, oh Jesus, somebody is coming to their senses today. He said, how many of my father's hired men have more than enough food? While I'm dying here of hunger, I will get up and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. The prodigal son said, hang on a second. I followed my friends. I thought I'm living the high life. I thought being a slave queen was cool. But look at me now. I'm suffering. I don't have food. He says, even the servants in my father's house at least 
have food. They have a covering over their heads. Hallelujah. He says, why should I stay in this position? Let me rather go back and tell my father I'm sorry. Let him tell, let me go back and tell him that I have sinned in your sight and in the sight of God. Then my situation will change. So the chains of the prodigal son were broken. So shall your chains be broken in Jesus' name. I said your chains are breaking in Jesus' name. Humble yourself. Some need to go back and apologize to their parents. You spoke out of 10. You thought there's something that is, you know, something that was a spirit pulling you. It was carrying you. It was giving you wings. And you realize that you don't have enough Red Bull supply. And the wings were clipped. And you need to come down. Go back home. Talk to me, somebody. Some people here, they say Red Bull gives you wings. You went out before time. You released yourself. You went and carried a townhouse. You went and carried a car that you cannot afford to pay the installment. You are in a townhouse that you cannot afford. Clip your wings. Go back home and, 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 and say sorry to your parents. Said, I'm independent. I am old enough now. Yes, you are old enough. At some point, you need to go out. But did you take calculated risks? Ah, Kadiabaso. Hey. Hallelujah. Calculated risks. You don't just go out and you say, I'm moving in with my boyfriend. What are you moving? Do you, do you, no. hey, God, Jesus. When they, when they dump you and you don't have a place to stay and you remember the words you uttered to your siblings, the arrogance that you had, and you told them that your, your boyfriend is driving a Porsche. You can maintain yourself and maintain your lifestyle. You can even pay them as you are looking at them. Hey, this life is a will. It can turn you and you will go back. One day you will need your family. When you are on your sick bed or your death bed, there are people who will not stand with you. God bless you if you get a husband that will stand with you, a wife who will stand with you, or that boyfriend that will still be with you. But proof positive, your family is the one that will still come for you. That will come and bath you in that hospital bed when your boyfriend or your girlfriend thinks you are smelling at that point. Control your wings. Control your wings. Don't rush out. You see, the scripture said, before they rushed out, some of them, they just went out too quickly. Too quickly. You didn't take a calculated risk. You're now entering, let me say this, for the sake of, in case you don't ever come to any of my women's meetings, don't go enter into home loan bonds with people that have not married you. Talk to me, somebody. It equally goes for the men. Please, I have seen it too much in my career. Stop signing papers for co-partnership for things you did not. You are not ready. Now you are you are going separate ways, and you are now wondering, hey, uh, we, we have to. We, they don't want to give me money. I have people that are being maintained, and they were never even married to the person. And they are being sued for maintenance. Jesus, mentality. Let your tell your neighbor your medulla must work. Your medulla oblongata, your brain, your mentality. Make your mind work when you take decisions. Because now we end up with prayer points that are unnecessary. Pastor, my, my, my boyfriend kicked me out. Why did you, did you kick yourself in in the first place? What were you doing there? We wouldn't be having this prayer point now. What was going through your mind when they told you that? Hey, Jesus. When you were signing the home loan at the bank and you did not even have the marriage certificates that will guarantee at least that you will be, in case you were marrying in community of property, that at least you will get something. You were just signing he loves me. He loves me. He loves me. When you now get to the he loves me not, you want to come in for counseling. The devil is alive. We will still cancel you and pray for you, but you must now understand that suffering will be for a little while and then he will rescue you, but you will suffer nonetheless. Everybody goes through the process. <laughs> hey, 
<laughs> Shout glory. <laughs> If you don't have these truths from church, I don't know where else you can find them. So change your mind. When you change your mind, you give your life a change. Change your mind, your life changes. Change your mind, your life changes. Number five, mentality will ultimately define your destiny. Your mentality will define your destiny. Look at the example of Joseph. While in the prison, he was thinking about the palace. So even when you are in your prison state, put the right thoughts in your mind. Put positivity in your mind. Put optimism in your mind. Amen, somebody. Be optimistic. Put positivism in your mind. When you put positivity and your mentality is in the right frame, you, you, you need to understand now that good things flock to you. Hallelujah. I declare that a change of mind is coming to you today. I said a change of mind is coming to you today. Hallelujah. Nothing that happens in your life should be a surprise because you know what you put in your mind. Success even should not be a surprise for you. You must expect it because you put it in your mind. I have a friend who lives in Los Angeles. He's a minister of God. Now he's got, he's ministering two churches in Texas as well. If I tell you the wealth and abundance that he has amassed and the success he has had, and I compare and tell you his start here in South Africa, when he was in South Africa, he came into South Africa as a foreigner. He married one young lady to Durban with permission. I'm, I'm sharing this story because it's a big testimony. He married a young girl in KZN. They did not have a wedding cake. They did not have a wedding dress. They had a cupcake. Do you understand what is a cupcake? That is how they celebrated their wedding. At that point, if you hear her, when she tells you, she say, when you say, when you looked at this man, did you know he would become what he is today? The businessman he is, the preacher that he is. Somebody would have said, hey, no, Wena, you are broke. Me, you, like this. Do you think, hallelujah. She tracked with this man up and down. They moved here in Pretoria. I kid you not. In their church, in their existence, when they started a ministry in this South Africa, their ministry did not grow beyond three, 13 people. 13, one, three people in church that were attending regularly. At some point, even myself, I wanted to ask him, are you sure you are called? Are you sure you know what this thing you are doing? And he used to say something to me. And then I started seeing him. He was applying for visas for him and his family. Then they went to... America. And I was like, I'm going to America, America, America. God called me to come to go to America. Even when he was here in South Africa, he kept on saying, I'm not called for this land. I'm not for Africa. He says, I'm going to America. I say, America, you, my friend. But anyway, God bless you. If you believe it, it's okay. And when he invited me and I went to their house, massive, he says, could you have believed it could have been me? He said to me something very powerful. He said, I always knew, I never doubted where I would end up. He said, I knew it in me and I held on to it. Even after us as friends, we were wondering whether he's cuckoo. We were saying he must just adjust himself. That maybe, you know, that God did not call you. Maybe he called you to go serve in another ministry. Just adjust yourself. But today... The same ministry he held on to that others would have quit and said, God is shaming me. Look, I only have 13 members. He's one that invites musicians. What's Sinach? You know Sinach? Now they come and minister in his church. Same guy. Promise a day. One day he will come by the grace of God and you will meet him. Humble, humble soul. Follow the dream. Follow the instruction, follow the destiny call consistently. Helped others on the way. I'm telling you a testimony of somebody I saw. Many even left Africa because of him. He helped them, helped relocate them, helped set them up. So when I tell you help others and stop being selfish, 
You never know what other door opens up for you. The people that he helped set up, yes, at points they overtook, it looked like, oh God, I'm helping others, but why is it like I'm stagnant? Don't worry, relax. One person you helped might be the one that talks to somebody to help you. Your destiny help us work in diverse ways. Amen, somebody. In Esther, in the Bible, when you go through Esther chapter 2, verse 15, she didn't doubt herself when they called and they said, the king is about to select a queen. Between Persia and Egypt, how many women are there? Millions of women. But Esther, Esther said, mm -mm, I'm entering the competition. And they looked at Esther. They said, what will we give you? To make sure that when you meet the king, you can impress because now it's a competition. And she said, I don't need anything. I'm fine like this. I don't need a weave. I don't need makeup. I don't need eyelashes. I just, I'm fine like this, natural like this. Why? He was saying, when it comes to the things of rulership and royalty, it is in my DNA. Or naturally, I am royalty. Therefore, when I come before the king, the king will know that royalty has stepped in. You can't buy class. You can't buy royalty. If it is in your DNA, kayabaye. You can't buy that. That's why when a man decides that they're getting married, you will hear a man say, tell you, I found peace in you. They are looking for peace. It's amen, Kosi. Amen. Yes, they are looking for peace. A man does not want a headache. You want marriage. A man does not, he just wants peace and respect. You, listen, you see, have I been wearing makeup all these days? No. It is not in that. Yes, I'm not saying don't look good. It's good to wear makeup. But yes, it's very hot. I sweat a lot now. I've made that decision. But look good. But realize that there's more than the makeup. There is the inner you. The inner DNA that needs to show forth and shine. Hallelujah. You are royalty in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Esther said, I don't need to wrap myself with anything. Some go to... Gomas, they give them something to rub on their bodies. You don't need anything to rub on yourself. Child of God, you just need to rub yourself with the anointing. Amen, my baby. Hallelujah. You belong to the future. And you must get there. Make up your mind. I belong to the future. And I must get there. Whatever my future is, I must get there. I must change my mind until I reach my future. Change your mind, your life will change. Where you are is not fixed. It's not permanent. It's not like they reinforce the foundation that you are not going to move. You are stagnant here. Mm -mm. There's no concrete holding down your feet. It is not a fixed thing. It's not a permanent position that you are in. Hallelujah. I decree you are moving forward. You are not going to be held back. You are moving forward. Hallelujah. So your royalty is not in your looks, but it is in your genetics. Amen, somebody. So how do we appropriate this mindset and this mentality? Romans 12 verse 2, he says, you must renew your mind continually. Renew your mind because today, yes, you are confessing. Tomorrow, somebody says something negative, then it plans. Don't allow yourself to listen to any nonsense. When people are talking nonsense in your ear, discouraging you, close your ear or move away from that situation if you can. If you cannot, tell them, you know what, just keep your opinion to yourself. We cannot be governed by the opinions of others. If you leave yourself to be governed by the opinions of others, you will never move forward in life. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. Because the more you hear nonsense and the more the voices of the devil begin to talk nonsense, that thing will fill up in your heart. And when you're, whatever it fills up in your heart, it will flow out into your outer life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't want to be overwhelmed by nonsense and negativity. Hallelujah. Because whatever fills up your heart becomes the reality in your life. So fill your heart with good things and good and positivity. 
Leave associations that, that break you. Break your spirit. And do not be conformed to this world. I be ye transformed by the renewal of the mind, focusing on those things that are godly, those godly values and ethical attitudes, positive attitudes, so that you may prove what is that good and acceptable thing that is the, in the perfect plan and will of God for your life. Hallelujah. So be refused to entertain demeaning thoughts about yourself. To be oh sorry, I meant four, number four B. Refuse to entertaining thoughts that are demeaning. They minimize you. Hallelujah. Numbers chapter 13, verse 33. Refuse to see yourself the way the enemy sees you. Refuse to see yourself the way they are talking about you. Refuse to have low thoughts, inferior thoughts. Refuse to undervalue yourself. The way some of us are generous sometimes, when you are selling something to people and they say, uh, discount, sometimes don't discount, guys. You don't have to discount everything. You'll end up discounting yourself. Don't discount yourself. Don't put yourself on discount. Don't undervalue yourself. Understand your worth. Your prize is your prize. I learned that this week. There was a friend of mine that said, but you know, now give me this. I said, mm mm. There comes a point in my life I have to apply proper business principles. The price is the price. If you don't like it, leave the merchandise. If you don't have the money, leave the merchandise. You will wait until it's time. There's one thing that I've trained myself now. When I don't have money, I don't have money. And I'm not going to engage my, in myself in that stress of that thing. There's something that I learned, and I give credit to this to, to my training. I was trained in a Nigerian uh, ministry. One thing that Nigerians don't like is credit. Debt. They like buying things cash. When you don't have, when you are not ready for the thing, they will not do it. Maybe some of the Nigerians that have transformed more in life. I, I'm, I'm giving this credit. I know you don't be xenophobic in your mindset as I'm saying this. Take the good things that you can learn from different nationalities. Hallelujah. If a Nigerian is to buy a car, they don't mind saving up so that nobody can claim, you know. So, yes, there's a room and, and, and a world of credit. Look, the, the world operates in a different way. In some countries, when you don't have credit, you can't buy anything because they want to see your credit history. I, I can't discount that. I can't discount that there's a fact that some financial, um, what do you call them, financial advisors will tell you to at least have a bond. It's a good debt. Yes, maybe you might take out a loan for a car, but make sure you pay it up quickly because it's not an investment that will just appreciate. It will depreciate. Hallelujah. You can't be taking out car loans for five, six cars. What are you doing with them? Are you five or six at home? Talk to me, somebody. So I learned the principles of, some shrewd principles of financial management from those I associated with from Nigeria. If the thing is, if it's not your time, it's not your time. I like big things. I like fleshy things. I won't lie. You can ask even Minister Amelia. She will tell you, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing, and you must do it big. If I know that, you see, there's a speaker we were using this morning. When I asked, I said, what is the speaker that we are connecting Bluetooth? She said, I don't know. But when I came close, I said, this is a Haman Kadon. That thing is expensive. I won't lie. It is a speaker of note. It's not a JBL. It's not these ones you find at Macro. You heard the quality of that speaker. There is a difference in sound. It's somebody who's got a discernment of good sound went and picked that thing. We're talking thousands of rents just for your pure pleasure. So until you can afford it, don't buy it. Because you don't want to put yourself under stress. And then you want to do uh, declarations. I cancel debt in my life. I cancel debt in my life. Let me move on. Numbers chapter 13, verse 33. There, there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anna. Pastor Tobias. Ah, Jesus is Lord. We are being free this year. This month of March, we are rising and shining. And the sons of Anna are part of Nephilim. 
And they said we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. So now when you think yourself a grasshopper, even the enemy will think that you are a grasshopper. You think yourself a non-entity. That is exactly how they will treat you. You don't love yourself, they will not love you. They will use you. When you don't love yourself, they will use you. You know who doesn't love themselves? Do you want to know examples? Let me talk to the ladies. Can I talk to the single ladies? Single ladies, are you ready for me? The one who calls you at 10 o'clock at night and cannot account why they could not call you the whole day. What do we call that? A B call. I won't say which one. God help me because their children will listen to this. Anybody who calls you at 1 o'clock a.m. and they want to come over to your house, what are they coming to do? And you think that person loves you. You think that person values you. Anybody who feels they can call you any you can't call them at any time after 8. Why? Because their wife is there. They, you, they will not click your call. Did I not tell you not to call me after 8? They answer your call. Yes, 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 yes. Brother Mtulisi, yes, I'm there for that meeting. Meanwhile, they are talking to a woman. Talk to me. Single ladies, watch yourself. Don't undervalue yourselves. These things are telltale signs. They are showing you this one is not serious. He does not love you. Because he sees how you treat yourself. He says, this one does not love herself. They are allowing me to call them anytime to do drive-bys at 10 p.m. He does a drive-by, he's gone by 12 midnight, going back to the one that he said, I do too. And you think that person respects you. We will be free in Jesus' name. Mentality change will give you liberty. Children, teach your children not to be bullied. Some people were bullied in school. They have carried those things in their mind. Help your children clear, clear out that mentality nonsense. They bullied you. They said you are ugly, stupid, all these things. Some children just bully people for the sake of bullying. Speak to your children. Speak positivity into their lives. Let them know that they are good people. They are brilliant. Even though you can see that the marks are slow, you are just wondering, is this my child slow? Don't say it. Don't say it. My child needs therapy. No, your child, my child, you are brilliant. Even when we are doing interventions, but you are brilliant. Ah, you, you are a child of God. You, you are royalty. You cannot be stupid. Speak the one you want to see. Don't you say, hey, Mara, who's Ufuzela? Who, who, whose child are you? Then the child is like, even my mother. It's the class teacher and even my mother and my father, they are saying, whose child are you? Can't you, who brought me into the world? I can I'm here in this house. So I belong to you people. It is your genes that created me. Hey, Jesus. Refuse for the circumstances of life to change your mentality. Your mentality must remain in check. Hallelujah. Refuse the circumstances that tell you there is no money. I'm poor. I'm from a poor family. Don't let those circumstances influence your mentality. Hallelujah. Refuse those thoughts that tell you I'm a non-entity. I'm a failure. I'm, 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 I'm not a reproach. Say it, say it. I, I, I'm not a reproach. I'm not a struggler. I'm not a failure. Jesus. I am the head. I am not the tail. I am blessed. I am not beneath. Therefore, I will not be placed beneath. I am loved. I am, I, I love. Hallelujah. God loves me. God cherishes me. I'm worthy. The next point, 4C, associate with correct-minded people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will see greatness in your life. I said you will see greatness in your life. The greatness that you have not seen in your parents shall be seen in you in Jesus' name. You will see the greatness that you see in your spiritual parents. You will see the greatness that you see in the mentors that have made a success of themselves. 
You are that greatness generation that Jesus has been waiting for. So four seasons associate with the correct minded people. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 says, He who walks as a companion with wise men will be wise, but the companion of conceited, of doubt, twisted, witted, fools are fools themselves and will experience harm. You hang out with fools, you will experience a foolish life and you will experience harm. It is there. It's not me. I didn't say it. It's the word of God that says it. You hang out with wise people, you will be wise. You hang out with the people in the corner and they're talking about, hey, Cho, life is hard. You, oh, you know, things are bad. They will be bad. They will continue to be bad. Nobody's raising the other one. The other one tells you how the politicians are just robbing us. The other one tells you that, ah, Cho, you know this thing. What do you think you are going to end up doing? Criminalism is calling you at that point. Hallelujah. Because you are going to start conjuring up deals, how you are going to, to rob that van and you are going to do, you know, sharp, sharp. I'm not saying avoid your friends that may also be in a similar situation. But when you are together, what are you talking about? There's only so much you can get from people. At least have a mix, uh, not even a mix. Hang out with more people who are going where you want to go so that they can speak into your life and you keep on learning. Ask, how do I do this? I want to do this. Go and volunteer your services and say, please, can I just, you don't, even if you don't give me allowance, can I be in your intent? Can I just learn? Make no mistake, anybody that you go and knock and offer help to, even if they said, I don't have money for to pay you, they will give you something. If you are serious, that door will open for you. That door will open for you. A man of God once uh, shared a testimony that somebody would come and say, uh, and come to his house, and it was a guy, and he would sweep his house every day, and he would chase this guy away. He says, no, stop, go away. I don't need you to come and clean my house. That same guy who was from a poor family, he says, eventually at some point I said, wait, come, why do you like coming and sweeping my house before I've even asked you? He said, I took this boy to school. Now he's a medical doctor. Hallelujah. He, did, he said, no, I'm coming to serve. I'm coming to serve the man of God. He made up his mind, I'm going to make myself useful. At least he was getting a plate of food in that process because there's no way somebody coming, they're helping, they're coming, they're helping in church. You give something, you help them. We share. And eventually, doors open. Somebody notices somebody in church and says, they give you a job. They say, I see you, Minister Sne, you are always sweeping in church. What is happening? What do you do? No, I'm at the moment, I'm in between jobs. I'm looking for a job. You never know who has come to church that day. You don't know even now who you are sitting next to and what door they can open for you. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Connect with higher uplifting grace. This is the last one, semi-last one. So connect with higher uplifting. We never get tired of the word. The word empowers us. Acts chapter 4 verse 13, it says, now when the men of Sanhedrin saw the confidence and boldness of Peter and John, and they grasped the fact that they were uneducated and untrained ordinary men, they were astounded and began to recognize that they had been with Jesus. So these men they were uneducated, untrained, but there was something about them. That was the grace of God. And the grace of God uplifted them. Uplifting grace. You change your mentality, you connect with a higher grace. You connect with higher lifted grace. Hallelujah. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Humility will take you places. Let God be the one that leads you to that uplifting Dwell in the arena of action. That's the last point for E. Dwell in the arena of action and answers. You live in a place where you take action. You have answers. Be the one who says, God, make me an answer to Snare's issue. Make me an answer to Amelia's issue. 
People who have answers get open doors. People who have answers are given an opportunity to dominate and rule. Hallelujah. Don't let the questions of life swallow you. Moses was in the jungle in the field, but he had answers for the women that he encountered there. And he eventually he got his own answer of where he was going. Talk to me, somebody. Don't sit down because you're going through challenges. Inside you, there are answers that are required for your next level. Amen, somebody. Naaman was a leper, but he was still going out to the battlefields. He was still going to fight. He took a prisoner that opened up his doors. So don't sit down and say, oh, I'm sick. Stand up and go. In that sickness, be moving and moving. Do something. Stand up to, and rise to your feet. Let's close. I know some of you have been watching time. But watch time. I don't know whether your life is watching or you are watching your life. Be watching your life as you are watching time. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 5, Peter, after toiling the night, the whole night, he had questions. He didn't catch the fish. He went out on an assignment to catch the fish. He didn't catch the fish. And Jesus came and Jesus said, borrow me your, your boats. And he borrowed the boat. And then he said, okay, let's go launch out to the deep. And what happened? He followed the instructions of Jesus and he caught a net breaking blessing of fishes, a lot more fishes than he anticipated. He had questions. He didn't have answers. He didn't understand why it did not work the time he went in. But when Jesus came and gave him the instruction, he didn't say, ah, I've been trying this thing, Jesus, but he said, yes, nevertheless, at your word. I want you to lift up your hands and say, nevertheless, at thy word, I will move on and I will move forward. Close your eyes. Let's thank God. Father, I thank you for the goodness and mercies in my life and the lives of those that have come to church this morning. Those who are listening to this word, those who will listen to this word even after. Father God, thank you for your word that has gone out the teaching. Blessed be your name, Lord Jesus. Show us the answers, God. Give us the solutions that we are looking for. Father God, show us what we are meant to offer to change the story of our generations. Give us the answers that will change the destinies of my generation generation. In the name of Jesus, I receive the grace. I receive the revelation. I want you to declare it with me. Say it. I receive the grace. I receive the revelation. I receive the light. I receive the insight, insight of God. In Jesus name, say with me, Father, cleanse my mind. Delete from my mind every wrong mindset I ask that you renovate my mind renovate and take out every negative take out every limiting thought that is holding me back I'm cleansed by your blood I apply my God for the baptism of a fighting spirit I receive it now in Jesus' name. I declare and I decree I have a fighting spirit. Thank you, God, for doing this deep surgery in my life today. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. God is giving you guys a territorial takeover. If you don't take a charge of this word hallelujah i feel sorry for those who will not act on this word it is time dwell in the place of what action now it's time for action hallelujah hallelujah if anybody is watching me right now and you're not born again the promises that i've declared and the teaching that i've made today does not apply to you if you are not born again i want every eye closed every head bowed if you are that person, I want you to lift up your hand. If you're listening to me across the airwaves, wherever you are, lift up your hand as well. I'm going to lead you in a prayer of salvation. And you will repeat after me if you are that person. If you're not sure whether you are born again as well, you are going to follow up and say the same prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I, ex I invite you to come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior.
I declare and I decree that I know that you died and you rose again on the third day. And when you rose again, you rose so that my life can be full of blessings. I declare and I decree that I am free from any curse, any curse of witches, any curse of principalities. I declare that I'm free and I'm blessed, that you are Lord and Savior and King over my life. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, if you have just prayed that prayer, say amen. Amen and amen, amen. Arise and shine for your light has come. Let us welcome um, Minister Tobias as he's coming to make the announcement. Uh, by the way, um, after church today, we will be having a workers meeting. Please make sure that you're staying. Those of you who are online, thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, please make sure that you revisit this message. Re-listen and re-listen and re-listen to it again in Jesus' name. Be blessed and have a beautiful week. We meet online tomorrow, Monday, 10 o'clock p.m. Thank you so much.